Hello everybody, Buzz here doing another first impressions video, this time on Flying Tigers, Shadows Over China. Now, this is an Ace Combat style flying arcade game set in World War II flying around the Pacific Theater, specifically China, Burma, and India. Now, also that it is in Asia, it's American, British, Russian, Chinese, and Japanese aircraft featured throughout. So we're going to go ahead and just skip the menus this time and go right into the game where we have the four main modes outside of multiplayer are campaign, dogfight, challenge, and free flight. Out of all the modes, free flight is my favorite, followed by dogfight. Free flight just lets you pick a plane, pick a map, pick your weather conditions, and fly. Try not to crash. Challenges are just little quick missions that give you a nice set. You have this plane, you're going against this AI on this, you just, just do it. Dog fighting is your pretty standard. Pick your plane, pick your enemy planes, pick the map, shoot them down, or get shot down. And the campaign is a little story about the many missions of the Flying Tigers. Uh, I have yet to complete them all because I've spent most of my time in free flight. So... We're going to go ahead and play Raid on Rangoon, where I'm going to be using a Buffalo Mark 1 with the control arcade control style and using my gamepad. Now, you can play the game with mouse and keyboard just fine. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. And you can play it with a flight stick, which is probably the better way to play it. But this is not a full-on simulator game like IL-2. This is, as I said, it's similar to Ace Combat, where the music is great, the explosions are over-exaggerated, there's a, quite a bit of cheese... And the controls are simple and responsive. So getting into the gameplay here, you get a little introduction, you know, date, and all that fun stuff. Kind of sepias into color. And I have to say, the game looks phenomenal. The voice acting could use a little work, but, you know, they gotta have that here. The guns sound weighty, the explosions are very loud, the engines are also really nice. That said, the music, the soundtrack fits. That, I'm not far behind. And... Let's go. Ah, gotta get up. Oof. Off the ground. And landing gear is retracted. Let's get into the fight. And it's fairly historically accurate with the enemies and the plane types. Obviously it's an arcade fighter so you have a health bar. You do have to worry about overheating. And that's really all there is to it. Why aim your little circle near the crosshairs, it kind of automatically locks on. And then you just you shoot. Until the plane goes down, maneuver out of the way as needed to avoid incoming fire. And boom! Scratch a bomber. Whew. There are a massive amount of planes here. Moving on to the next one. And this is pretty much the missions in a, in a nutshell. They're, they're not overly difficult, they're not overly hard. It is just a lot of simple fun. As I said, I mostly play the free flight and the dog fights because the missions are, in my opinion, rather dull. They're not bad. As I said, I just feel they're dull. The controls are super responsive, though. And, and fully customize it. Let's scratch another one down. Now to get back into the fight. And that's pretty much all there is to this game. It does what it does well. The missions are relatively short, anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes. Some of the missions are harder than others. This one is not particularly hard. I'm not playing 
particularly well either. There goes another one. As far as I can tell, there's no real like critical hit style damage where if you shoot, you know, shoot the engine, they fall faster, or if you get a lucky hit through the cockpit, it's another. It's just a pretty standard, you know, your guns do damage. There are bombs and missiles. This mission, however, does not show them. And what I do particularly like is like, the presentation is really well done. The HUD is very clean. There is a cockpit view, and the cockpits are fairly detailed. There is no human. But, you know, it's also very disorienting. I would not use the cockpit outside of aesthetics. The other problem I have with this game is there's a little bit of authenticness in terms of the language used. It is rated M, but I feel there's a little bit of language that doesn't need to be used. But in, oh, I, I'm apparently going to be flying a different plane on this one. So this is a two different types of planes and we're up and away get the landing gear in and stowed intercept the enemies so there are also special maneuvers you can do like rolls that you can only do every so often because they don't want them to be super overpowered the other complaint I have is, there's only two difficulties, there's casual, which is super easy, and then there's normal, which is very easy. But the other thing I really like is there's no, not many games cover the AVG, which is the American Volunteer Group, that flew to defend China, Burma, and India. It mostly focuses on the big campaigns. They are everywhere. Oh, where was my train of Another thought I had was, um, it is definitely more arcade than something you don't have to worry about fuel or ammunition or anything like that. That's kind of nice. You just kind of focus on flying. Your weapons do overheat, bombs recharge, etc. So it's not just straight. Uh, unlimited ammo. Uh, when you play the game on cinematic or really high resolutions, there can be pitching and slowdown. Unfortunately, I have not experienced those, but there have been reports of it. The soundtrack is really good when you can hear it over the guns. That is, that is one of the big issues I have, is the volume can be quite loud even turned down a bit as well. sense of what dogfighting could be like. Close proximity to enemy aircraft, just unleashing hell with the machine guns. The only complaint I have about that system is I wish there was more modeling, like if I was hitting engines, that they would sputter out, slow down, etc. Instead of just have a hell bar. But that's an arcade thing, and you know, that's kind of how it goes. And the explosions are just really, really big. That you wouldn't expect these kind of explosions from an airplane in the air unless you hit all the people. 
not really how it would work. Um, I'm trying to think. The, another minor complaint I have is the... To exit the game, you have to back out of the menu. I think we got this. You've done well, boys, but we're seriously damaged down here. I'm starting to think they're gonna kill us all. You gotta pull for this, pal. I say we let the bombers go and concentrate on breaking up their fight spirit. You're crazy. There are too many Japs. Could be 50 of them. That's really all there is to the game. That's a big in detail, but... I got locked on there. And you can fly right through planes, which is kind of funny. I mean, it's... The game speaks for itself. It's it's not a budget title, but it's not a AAA title either. It's just a solid game for what it is. I like it. That's really all I can say about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and shut up and let the game do the talk. That seems like... That nope. That is not the end of this mission yet. And now we have to face an ace.
Flying Tiger, Shadows Over China. I give it a thumbs up. It is worth picking up. It is a very short game, but still very much worth it.